So, you want to shoot moving image film, but can't face the hefty price tag. Introducing the Zenit Quarz DS83, the cheapest way to shoot on film. The Zenit Quarz DS83 is a spring-wound, USSR-made, double Super 8 camera made in the Karaznogorsk mechanical factory between 1971 and 1983. For any 16mm fans out there, that name might sound familiar as it's also where they made the K3, but 16mm is way too expensive, so back to the DS83. I bought mine for £20 off a Ukrainian man on eBay, although £30 shipping meant that overall this camera cost me £50. It is possible you may be able to find one cheaper. Before I go any further, I should address a very important detail about this camera, and that's that it's a double Super 8 camera. Unlike normal Super 8 film, DS8 film is actually 16mm in width with Super 8 size perforations. The intention with this film is to run it through the camera once, exposing one half of the film, flip it, then run it again, exposing the other half. You or the lab will then process it, cut it down the middle, and splice each end together, making one long reel of Super 8 film. Therefore, for 25 feet of DS8 film, you end up with 50 feet of Super 8 once processed. This isn't as simple as normal Super 8 where you can just slap in a cartridge and start shooting, but for half the price, it's worth the extra effort. It's important not to get this mixed up with regular 8mm slash double 8mm film, as this type basically works in the same way, however has larger perforations, and as a result has a smaller frame size. It is possible to shoot cheaply on regular double 8 as long as you have a camera that can take it, However, where I live, there's more options and availability for DS8 film, and the extra frame size gives you slightly better resolution, so we're just going to go with that. Now, back to the DS8 III. As I mentioned earlier, this is a spring-wound camera and has a total of zero electronic components, which if you're a dummy like me, should be music to your ears. All you have to do is give it a little wind, and then boom, you're shooting on film. This does mean you can only shoot for around 20 to 30 seconds continuously, but hey, it's £20. It comes with a zoom lens, manual aperture control, and a selenium light meter. You can shoot in 12, 18, 24, or 36 frames a second, or you can use this switch on the side to either shoot one frame every time you pull the trigger, or to run continuously if you have any Soviet-style group photos you want to take. Before we wrap up, I should go over some extra costs that will have to be considered if you want to be shooting on this thing regularly. The first, obviously, is film. The cheapest 25 foot roll I've been able to find, which remember yields 50 feet of final footage, is a black and white reversal film called Fomapan R100, which I was able to pick up for around £15. This is sold at a local store to me, so I won't include any shipping costs. Once you've exposed it, you've got processing and most likely also scanning. Processing can be done at home for black and white, but it can be quite a technical process, especially for reversal films like Fomapan R100. If you already have a tank at home and are up for the challenge, I'd recommend getting the Foma Pan Reversal Dev Kit for £30, as this can develop at least two reels, which will cut your processing costs in half. That said, if you're very new to working with film, I suggest getting your first couple reels developed professionally. Then, if you like the results and want to keep experimenting, you can look into getting a tank and some chemicals. Consumer level 8mm scanners are quite expensive, so I'd recommend just sending your film to a professional to get scanned. This website will scan my film for £12, with shipping back and forth, that's about 20 So in total, that's £50 on the camera, £15 for the film, £30 for the processing, and £20 for the scan, bringing our total to £115. Okay, so this still isn't the cheapest in the world, but taking out the upfront cost of the camera, we've got £65 per 25 foot roll but we can definitely cut this down significantly for future roles by utilising bulk buying. Bulk buying will mean a higher upfront cost, but it can create big savings if you're also willing to put in a bit of extra effort. First off, I was able to find DS8 Fomapan R100 in a 100 foot spool for £30. This will give us four 25 foot rolls, which we can load into the DS8 III, which remember once processed will give us 200 foot of Super 8 film. This will require you to rewind the film onto a smaller spool in either a changing bag or a darkroom, but assuming you're comfortable doing that, we're now at £7.50 per 50 feet of final film, which is insanely cheap, especially when compared to the price of a 50 foot Super 8 cartridge. To make this as cheap as possible, we're going to have to develop ourselves, but once again, I'd recommend getting it done professionally for at least the first few reels. What I'm about to go over is purely just to demonstrate how cheap it could be if you decided to go through the self-developing route, and I will be assuming that you already have some kind of developing tank to do this in. Like I said earlier, the official Fomapan developing kit claims to be able to develop 50 feet of double Super 8 or two reels. However, for my last 25 foot roll, I was able to develop my film fine by just using a third of the chemicals in the box, 
so you could definitely get at least three reels or 75 feet out of one kit. Also, since Firma say on the box that the kit can process 100 foot of 16 millimeter, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to get away with developing all 100 feet of the DS8 that we bought earlier with one processing kit. However, I haven't tested this as of yet. Assuming you can get away with this though, that makes £7.50 for developing each roll. So now we're at just £15 for film and developing. With scanning, that makes £35 per 25 foot roll, which once again yields 50 feet of final Super 8 film, which means we're not far off 50p a foot for a final processed and scanned image. I'm aware I've just listed a bunch of numbers at you which might not be the easiest in the world to follow, so my friend Joe has very kindly put a lot of this information into an easy to read PDF that you can find a link to in the description below. So to briefly conclude, assuming you're starting with nothing and you take the bulk buying route, you'll be facing an upfront cost of £160 for a sweet new camera and 10 to 12 minutes of processed and scanned footage. That about does it for this video. Of course everything I've gone over is just the cheapest way I was able to come up with shooting on film. Depending on factors such as your location and general luck, it's possible you could beat this price, but it's also possible you could end up spending a little bit more. Either way, I hope this video encourages some of you to give DS8 a try, as I really believe it's the most accessible way to get into moving image film. Thanks for watching.